Welcome to today's lesson. My name is Cesar Diaz. Uh, I work here at B2B Soft. I'll be showing you how to use the reporting module on wireless standard. So the first thing you're going to do to get to the reporting module is you're going to click on reporting over here. When you click there, it'll take you to an external website. Um, by default, it'll, always, it'll go to your Internet Explorer. However, if you choose to, I would copy the address here. Let's say you prefer Chrome. I would copy the address. Okay. I'd open up Chrome. I'd paste it here. And then put in the access code, username, and password, which can be found in Wireless Standard. To find the access code on Wireless Standard, you go up to where it says Help and click on About Wireless Standard. Now you would copy the access code, okay. and you would go ahead back into Chrome. You would enter the access code. Okay. Then you would put the same username and password uh, as you do in Wireless Standard. And that's if you prefer to use Chrome as opposed to uh, Internet Explorer or the default program you have. So now this is the reporting module screen that we're looking at here. On the left-hand side, you notice we have different tabs. Now the one tab you want to keep in mind is the Customs tab. Now this is where you get to create custom reports. This is where you also get to create uh, and distinguish and coordinate who gets access to certain reports. We'll reach. We'll get to that point a little bit later. But right now, if you ever want to look at all the folders for our reports, you go down to where it says reports and you click open. Now here are the different categories of the reports that you can run. So we have a category, let's say, for inventory. When I click inventory, it will display to me all the different inventory reports I can run. For example, here we have business contacts, inventory, inventory adjustment details, inventory count, and so forth. One of the inventory reports we get asked for the most is the one that says inventory quantity and cost by store. Now, when looking now when doing certain reports, you can select locations. So if you have multiple stores, you can select different stores or exclude stores from the reports. Also, if you notice here, we have products. So let's say you want to run a quick inventory quantity and cost report, and you just want to check out your accessories. So the only one you would have highlighted would be accessories. And if you run this report, it will run the report only for the things that you choose. Or if you want to be more specific, let's say you want to see how a particular item sells, or you can actually expand and select a particular item or deselect a particular item. So what we're going to do is we're just going to run a search for all the products and click on OK. Now if we take a look at what we have here, we'll just run through what, we, what we're looking at. So the first column is store, second column is bin, okay? third column is product ID, which is exclusive to your own database. The next column over is the product description. If your product has a serial number or an IMEI number, it'll appear here in the serial one column. Okay. Quantity is how much total we have of these items. Now, if it's an item like if it's an item that has a serial number, okay, even if it's the same product, because of the different serial numbers, it'll display as a different product altogether on a separate line. Now, if we look at the columns, if quantity and we go all the way down, we see here in big bold letters, um, in big bold numbers, that this is our total amount of, of products we have in our company. Now if we look at total cost, now cost is how much we pay the vendor for these items. So if we look at the total cost and go down, 
Over here, we see the total amount that we've spent in the store inventory so far. Now we have another place we go to where we can look at our reporting options. So up here on the upper right, with that little arrow pointing down, it says Report Options. Click there. One of the first options I'm going to show you is how to show hide columns. Now this can be done with all the reports. You go to Modify, and then you go over to Show Hide Columns. Now if you notice, this box appeared over here on the left-hand side. These are the optional columns that we can add to the report. And what I mean by that is, these columns here can also be removed. So this report I'm printing out is an inventory quantity and cost by store report. I have clients that whenever they want to run a quick inventory of the entire store, they go to this page, this report, and they print it out for their employees. And then their employees go around the store and begin counting while the store is open. So that way you don't have to close the store down to run the inventory. However, there are certain things that you may not want your employees to see. For example, I don't, you, know, you may not want your sales reps to know how much you pay for each item. So what you can do is you can augment the report for them. Click on total cost, for example. Click and hold and drag it into this little box and let go. And now you'll notice we remove this column completely. Now the same, it can be done vice versa as well. So if you see a column here that you want over here, simply click, drag it, and then drop it on the columns. And now we have a new column here. Now another type of option we have, okay, we go to modify, and we can add the report to custom. Now when you click add report to custom, it takes this report parameters and it creates it for you on a folder in a folder separate up here that says shared. I mean, so, pardon me, custom. And then you'll see it down here and you would select it. So what we're going to do is we're going to add this report to custom now. And we're going to name it something so we know what we're looking at. Now the description will be what this what, what it's going to be how it's going to describe the report. Now, if you have multiple stores, you can select the report to share with certain stores only. Also, if you just have a select group of employees that you want uh, to view this report, you can select your employees from the Employee tab. Now, be aware we also have ro mobile reports, which means that you can check this reporting module by copying the link and using the access code, username and password like I showed you previously. So if you copy the link and email it to yourself or text it to yourself, you can actually view the reports of your wireless standard uh, on any mobile device. And now we're going to click OK and we're going to add this report to our custom reports now. So now we are no longer in all, we are now in custom. If we scroll down, we'll notice that testing inventory quantity and cost by store. Pardon me. Uh, if we look down here where it says inventory quantity and cost by store, this is the re custom report I just created that I just moved over here. So now I'm going to click it and I'm going to run it. And it's going to give me the same results as it did before. However, now that it's in customs, there's more you can do with it. Now, one of the things you can do from customs is to subscribe to a report. You could also export the report to an XLS file, which is for Excel. Or if you want to, you can print the report from here. 
Now, if you to choose subscribe, it will ask you to set up the emails that you will be receiving. So when you subscribe to something, uh, to a report on wireless standard, what you're doing is you're having emails sent out uh, in intervals. And you determine how often they're sent out and when they would stop. So subject would be what would be the uh, subject of the email. Okay, recipients. Email addresses, comments, it's what the body of the email will look like. Okay, now these will be sent out as an attachment, as an Excel attachment. Okay. Now if you choose to have these sent once, you can just click once and click OK and it will send it to you. Or you can select date ranges. So if you wanted to start on a certain date and end on a certain date, you click on end and then you choose end. You could choose to have these reports emailed to you once, hourly, daily, weekly, or monthly. I have a lot of clients that the first thing they did was they subscribed to their own daily sales reports and they receive theirs every day now. So they don't have to go looking for them. Now we're going to go back to the reports. Take a look at some of our other reports, including commissions. Okay. If you're with Metro, we have Calidus. Okay, but over here we have employee commission details, summaries, and we also have location details and summaries. Over here, sales. We have many sales. Uh, we have key stats by location and key stats by employees, which will bring us to the next part of our, of our training today, which will be the KPI. All right, so KPI is a section we have in a reporting module, and this is a key performance indicator. Okay. Now, to create it, now what it is is you're establishing uh, for your company your set goals. What do you expect from your employees? How much you expect them to sell, and so forth. You could also track commissions using the KPI. So to get to the KPI, you go to the upper right hand side, and you click on these three lines that says Main Menu. Once here, you're going to go down to performance management. Now, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take a look at the button on the upper right, I mean, pardon me, upper left, the one that says KPI. KPI, again, signifies Key Performance Indicator. Now, these are all the different KPIs I have in my, in my current company. So what we're going to do now is we're going to create a KPI up here. And now we choose the kind of key performance we, uh, we want to keep our eye on, whether it's product, service plans, plan options, and so forth. So products, again, physical products, phones, uh, you know, any uh, cell phone case, any tempered glass, anything. Service plan would be your activations and your phone payments. Your plan options, these are like your, um, your insurance on the phones. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a KPI and we're going to create a product. Now over here, the KPI, the Key Performance Indicator, we're going to choose whether we're selecting an employee or by location. So we'll do employee. And now it's going to ask us about the K. Now it's going to ask us to name it. <coughs> And that's the name we'll have for it. If you want to add a description, you can go ahead and add a description. Now, how we measure the key performance will be either to quantity 
revenue or profit? So quantity is amount sold. Revenue is the amount you, you net, while profit is is after cost, your gross profit. So we'll select quantity. Now on the right, we select whether this is, will be calculated as net or gross. We'll choose gross. Now you select products. Now you, because we selected products, you're now going to choose the products that we're going to be keeping an eye on with our employees. And by default, we have them all. But for this lesson, we'll just do it on accessories. Now, if you look down here to the left-hand side of accessories, we click that little arrow, it'll expand for us. When it expands, we actually can see the categories that exist within the accessories department. Now, if I were to expand the, the, the category, I can even select individual items on this list. So over here, I have this waterproof Samsung Galaxy S4 case. Let's say I just wanted to do a key performance indicator on this one product. I can do so like this. So if, let's say you have a you know, iPhone 6 OtterBox that you're trying to keep your eye on or that you want to track and see how well you guys are selling or see if you're meeting up to goal. You can create a KPI using just that one case as your group. And I'm going to go ahead and click OK. And now we got our test KPI for the webinar. Go over to the right. And if I need to edit it, I just click on the edit button. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to set up the goals, so KPI goals. Now based on what we set, we're going to find it here on the list. So KPI name, the one we're looking for is called Test KPI for Caesar Webinar. Now over here is where you would set your goals for your employees. Up here is where you would set the thresholds. So anything, and according to these thresholds, for your accessories, if 50 or less were sold, they're in the red. Now between 50 and 80, they're almost up to goal, but their goal will be over 80. Now you could set the goal up down here. Okay, so let me find my guy here. All right, this guy here, Bruce Wayne. Now I'm going to set his goal for 100 accessories sold this month. Now I want to select another, uh, now if I want to change the threshold, I simply click here and decide what is acceptable to be considered red, yellow, and green. So I can change it to 60. So that means unless he sells 60, it's going to appear red with his name during the KPI indicators. So over here, you would set the goals for this month. Now once you have that set up, we go over to commission rules, and here's where you can set up commissions for your KPIs as well. Now, if you were shown how to use the commission rule manager on wireless standards, it's very similar to this. It's just in a different location. So we'll go over to create profile, profile name. Okay. 
and we're going to select it by employee and click OK. Now we have down here test commissions for Caesar webinar. We'll go over to the right and we'll create a rule. Now this will be a rule name. And then we decide what the rule is based on, whether it's the goal of the KPI or the KPI value. Select goal, select the rule, sorry. So because we set the KPI goal, now we're going to find the KPI rule. And the KPI rule we're looking for is test KPI for Caesar webinar. Now we go to payout method. Now whether it's flat amount, percentage of the profit, revenue, monthly recurring charges, or if it's a bonus. So we'll do flat amount. And the payout for the KPI. Uh, Now, if we hear from 0% to whatever a percentage of their KPI met, they will receive a certain amount. So let's say they just made 80% of their goal. Then they'll be able to get a payout of like 10 bucks. And then click OK. Oh, sorry. Roll tires. Oh my God. Pardon me. Uh, sorry. Uh, you set them up by tiers also. I, I forgot to show you that. Okay. So if let's say they just made 10%, okay, they'll get a payout of like a dollar. Uh, sorry, one dollar. And then you add it. Okay. Now anything from 10 or greater, so if they make 10 to 20 percent, then they'll get two dollars on the commission. And now anything over, so if they got 100 percent, they'll make three dollars. And that's the way you would set up the commission for the employees on a KPI. Now we go over here to rule assignment. Now assignment level. And choose employee. And commissions profile. Where you see the test. So now that you created the commission profile, you select the employee that you want to uh, that you want to apply it to, and then click on assign. And now this guy has the commissions that I set up. Now commissions audit, that's where you get to uh, check your commissions. Unfortunately, I don't think I have any on my system. I might. Okay. So yeah, commissions audit. What I did is basically I updated all my commissions, make sure everything is uh, good, and I'm gonna click on commission reports, employee commission summary or location summary or details. Now over here, based on the commissions I set up in the KPI, it will appear here. Unfortunately, I have a, I have a training database that I, it's not really, I haven't rang up sales or done commissions on this. This is why it's appearing blank. Okay. 